Welcome y bienvenidos to this episode of the Cultural Capacity Podcast. I am one of your hosts and teachers here, Justine Gonzalez. Today we want to hop into a little bit of a conversation about cross-cultural communications. When I say cross-cultural, that could mean any number of things. And when you think of culture, I want you to remember that not only our personal cultural context as well as organizational culture, they all have these common core components. And that would be our beliefs that drive our norms and values and how we show up in our lives, just in general, how we communicate, how we handle conflict, um, what motivates us to keep going in this thing we call life. Um, one of the other attributes would be symbols and language. And sometimes we get this confused with speaking the same language. Actually, language has to do with how we communicate when we're in distress, how we communicate love, how we are able to identify, accept, and communicate as well as resolve emotions that we are experiencing as humans. And then I also, another thing that comes to mind, and I'll point out my background here, um, is I've been really into creating some of these dynamic AI art pieces. And this one I titled the CEO. So if AI is your jam, make sure you drop some emojis in the comments because I am thinking about possibly doing a series on some different AI tools that I love that are really helping our company advance forward into um, this era that we're in. So. I want to hear honestly, and let's take this first little trail here into this concept of artificial intelligence. Where do you stand with it and why? It's a really good measuring stick. And I do a lot of work in the K-12 space. That's been the majority of my career. It's kind of my comfort zone, so to speak. And we all have these things that no matter our job or sector, just like behind me, we can feel like there's so much going on in the world around us. And yet we're still charged with showing up every day. And that might be in a workplace. It might be doing your own thing and running your own company or your own ventures. Uh, however, no matter where we walk to in this world, we are going to encounter people who believe, speak, live, act, um, communicate differently than ourselves. And for all of us to remember, especially because we are entering into another election cycle year in the United States. I know there's a lot of different things happening all over the world, and there has been, there always will be. Um, the thing right now is technology has advanced us so much and so rapidly in the past really 20 to 30 years in particular, beginning with the dot com boom and now really looking at the dot AI boom, so to speak. So when I think of cross cultural communications and I think about the skill set required to really effectively run an organization these days and also have employment within an organization, there are so many skills that previously, if you were getting an MBA or a PhD or a graduate degree of some sort, an undergrad degree, no matter what it is or the certifications, there is a time when you felt somewhat equipped going into those roles and you had a very simple description and this is what this role entails. And then these are the metrics and outcomes by which you're evaluated. One of the noticings I've had specifically in the K-12 sector is resistance. Um, and this has been going on for some time and there's resistance around how to teach about the our country's history. I've seen this internationally as well, not just in the United States. Um, there's disagreements about the best approach to teaching reading to children, um, specifically reading the English language. When we think about the conversations that happen, I, I think about one of my family members who looks after her great grandkids and she's still very active. She's in her early 70s, I believe 72. And she looks after a couple children after school every day that are, I believe, second grade and fourth grade currently. Well, her having a conversation with them and based upon her work in schools and just in being a mother, it is like completely different worlds. There are conversations and words, whether it's about artificial intelligence or gaming systems or social media that 
she just does not have context for. This is what I'm seeing happen more and more in workplaces and specifically with a component I call intergenerational communication or multi-generational communication. You can find those terms online and what it is is really having this common understanding of how the norms and the values by which we meet and agree upon and how we communicate versus each of us trying to push a particular value or norm that we believe is best. Now, this leads me to this whole conversation about best practices. In any industry I've gotten the pleasure in working in, there I hear this term best practices. And it often comes out of human resources departments. It's often what drives policies. However, one of the curious things, and we know here at the podcast, Cultural Capacity, we like to get compassionately curious. And one of the things that my team at Educator Aid has gotten curious about is when we meet with organizations to potentially work alongside them to help improve cross-cultural communications, um, the cultural relevancy of their leadership programming, as well as streamlining communication and centering the voices of everyone, um, including the voices of everyone in your organization, in your decision making, becoming a more distributive leadership model, an adaptive leadership model. What we have landed on is actually a tool, a do-it-yourself audit tool that we share with organizations. And you can actually find it on our website for free. It's linked below. And it's really this examining of who determines the best practices in your organization. This tool is meant and designed to be used by any level of employee any team member and or groups of team members who are evaluating the current existing policies, practices, and programs. So there's three things that we filter this tool through. And I just named policies, practices, programs. We really look at people and look at how your hiring processes are currently utilized and who you're searching for and why. What do offboarding practices look like? What do exit strategy interviews look like? Um, and are they used for the continuous improvement process? So we center those three buckets, people, programs, and policies. We have an entire do-it-yourself step-by-step tool with protocols that you can go download for free. But check it out, let us know what you think, and. Let me know your thoughts on these conundrums that we're running into. I think sometimes we think we are in conflict or disagreement. And in fact, these are actually communication conundrums um, or just cultural misunderstandings. And sometimes we want to so much be heard through our lens and our way of being that it's hard for us to see that there could possibly be other ways of functioning. So I want to encourage you that as the world is rapidly growing and changing and doing all this around you, like my background, you still have yourself. And it, at the end of the day, it's you with your thoughts. And we ultimately control our responses and our reactions in all the situations that we find ourselves. So I hope that this episode resonated. If it did, make sure you hit follow or subscribe. This past month and still, still gaining views each day, please do check out our very first monthly mashup episode. We did a cross episode of Cultural Capacity with the podcast Wigopedia. Go check that out, as well as our featured voice for this month, the Courtney Hartman, a surgical technologist who flies across the country with hearts in, in coolers. I Yes. I'm honored I got to interview her on the Cultural Capacity Podcast. We also will continue our trend of offering one time per month. An episode will be focused on workplace wellness with our in-house wellness expert, Kara Gonzalez-Howard, my sister, and also the Vice President of Innovation and Marketing here at Educator Aid. Make sure you check out our content and we have more coming. Be sure that you interact and comment to let us know what you want more of and what tools you need. Check out the do-it-yourself audit tool below on best practices and let us know what you think as you use it with your team. Take care. Let's continue to get compassionately curious together.